I'm not really sure, but I'd like to try one a little bit more than what I, I see and read about. My concern is that it's probably out of my uh, range for finances right now in terms of what I keep reading about the cost for these things. Plus, the I don't think people understand what the cost it's going to be for running them, too, off of your electric bill or whatever. When you first see it, Electrovair looks like any other car, but when you get into it, 500 volts replaces the fuel tank and an electric motor takes the place of an engine. Forward or reverse is selected with a standard gear shift lever. The smoothest possible acceleration is provided by the solid state controls. Electrovair 2 can accelerate as quickly as a standard Corvair, even with a full load of passengers. Once underway, Electrovair 2 gives a new sensation in driving. There is no engine noise or vibration. All you hear is the hum of electricity pulsing through the controls. The car handles normally in every way except for braking. There is no engine drag to help slow down Electrovair 2. Therefore, higher performance brakes are used. Additional electronic controls could be added to give dynamic braking. The solid state controls for Electrovair 2 are behind the rear seat. You can see the heavy cables used to handle the high currents required. Electrovair 2 was built as a test bed for motor and control development. Road tests of the complete car are the only way to find out whether a motor control system will work under everyday driving conditions. Typical traffic driving requires starting, stopping, following, passing, all with smooth, positive control of power. As we press the accelerator, our controls must accurately supply extremely high currents to the motor, as much as 500 amps, to quickly and safely pass other vehicles. Electrovair 2 can only travel 40 to 80 miles, depending on how you drive it, before its silver zinc batteries must be recharged. Recharging takes almost six hours. Obviously, for most driving, a better battery must be found to make a practical car. But Electrovair 2 has demonstrated for the first time what electric car performance could be like when that better power source is found. It's going to cost a lot. Plus the batteries, when they go out, man. Holy shit, when the batteries go out. Oh, you got to take out a loan. You got to take out a loan. You got to get a mortgage on to get a new battery. You got to get a mortgage on your car, or on your house, and your car fix. I have stall chargers. I let the other people. I'd rather have the older cars, where all you needed was spark and gas. This country is never going to be ready for electric cars. You're not going to see people driving electric cars. Too expensive. and not enough range and stuff, it's too inconvenient. You know, this we're so no, used to cars and trucks and stuff, they're not gonna drive them, they're not gonna buy electric like vehicles, they're gonna be too expensive in the long run. They yeah, could not make a decision. Oh, is that right? They could not make a decision. Yeah, he did not want to put himself on it. So Good morning. I'm Danny Ward for research uh, about the electric car. I don't know if that's going to, it, it, it's a remain to be seen here, uh, how that's going to work out. But like the average Joe Blow is not going to be able to afford it. But I mean, there'd be a lot of leasing going on maybe. But uh, like other people said, I wouldn't mind trying to try one and see what it, see what it does or, you know, see how I like it. Maybe, who, who knows? So, I buy an electric car. I don't know if I've got an extension cord that would take me as far as I want to, uh, as far as I want to go. Uh, no, I'm not going to buy one. I like what I got.
California could be in for a breath of fresh air because the federal tree huggers have mandated that America's big seven automakers must start producing some zero emission cars. And GM have got there first. The electric car is here. And here it is, the General Motors EV1 electric, or as they say in California, the Volkswagen. This is the car that the oil companies and other car makers have tried to stop. It's cost GM near on half a billion dollars and is state-of-the-art technology. So what we're going to do is we're going to take old Sparky here out into the cut and thrust of LA streets and see just how long those batteries last. Twenty-six lead-acid batteries give this aluminium, magnesium and fiberglass hybrid 137 brake horsepower. But one of the great myths about electric cars is that they're silent. The EV1 sounds like a cross between a food mixer and a hair dryer. To its credit, it is incredibly easy to drive. It's very car-like. It'll accelerate to 60 in about 8 seconds and they've actually had ungoverned ones of these doing 180 miles an hour on the Bonneville Salt Flats. So what do I think? Well, it's actually very quiet, very refined, very quick, and very drivable. In essence, a jolly good little car. But the batteries suck, the range is appalling, and if you had to buy one, it would cost you a whopping £35,000. But let me leave you with this thought. Ten years ago, mobile phones were the size of suitcases and cost £2,000. Today, they're the size of calculators, and they're giving them away. Make no mistake. The days of the internal combustion engine are definitely numbered. I would like to buy an electric vehicle, but uh, the price has got to come down. I, it's too high. But I'd like to do it. You know, I don't think I want to. I don't know if I want an all electric, but I want a hybrid, I think. Yeah. So. Electric vehicle? 13 weeks, I think. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know anybody in the end. And I can. Uh, as far as electric vehicles, yes, I'd like one for around town. Um, one of our vehicles in the past was a mild hybrid, and the electric part of it was a great advantage, although at the time was fairly expensive. Um, I, th I think they're great for certain circumstances, and uh, the technology is mature enough now to give people something that they can use and not have to worry about. Um, unfortunately, the resale value on them is not that great yet, but uh, that'll come around. I'd, I'd be uh, I'd like to try it. I don't know if I could uh, really use it or not, but I think that's a good idea. Can't pull your boat in. Yeah. No, I can't pull my boat in. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I, I like the idea of electric vehicles. Less complicated, but it's going to cost thousands to replace those batteries. That's the part that scares me right now. Hey, look alive there, Dave. Is what I like to own an electric vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to say I really have no interest whatsoever. I don't mind the old IC engine. I'm happy with it. It gives me a lot more range. So I'll stay with the IC engine, and I think it'll be around for a lot longer than people think. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Well, regarding electric vehicles, I leased two volts a number of years ago, and I really enjoyed them. Uh, that, of course, is a, is a hybrid vehicle, but it was really good. If you're driving in the city, you charge it. And you really don't use any gas, to be honest with you, which is kind of nice. It's also interesting to note that at the turn of the 20th century, from the 1800s to the 1900s, uh, about one-third of all vehicles were electric. So I think there's still a good future for electric vehicles, and the, yeah. battery, uh, the batteries keep getting developed. Uh, the lithium-ion battery just got the uh, won the Nobel Prize. Let's say you want a fully electric car. Over 200 miles of range would be nice. But like most of us, you just don't have the money to spring for a Tesla Model S or X. 
you could get in line with over 300,000 other people and wait till you eventually get a Tesla Model 3. Or you can go out and get a Chevy Bolt basically now. Beating Silicon Valley upstart Tesla to market with an affordable long-range EV is quite a feat for GM, a symbol for old-school Detroit. Then again, GM was ahead of their time when they rolled out the first Chevy Volt with a V more than six years ago. The Volt with a V is based on an all-new structure. Up front, there's no engine. That's where many of the electrical drive components reside. The 60 kilowatt hour battery is installed in the floor and provides some of the car's structure. That big battery delivers an EPA estimated 238 miles of range. Totally recharging the Bolt takes around nine and a half hours on 220 volts. The Bolt has available DC fast charging, which gives you up to 90 miles of range in half an hour. That charging network is also growing. With the battery in the floor, there is a low and flat door sill. Combined with tall doors, getting in and out is a cinch. There's good space in the rear seat, helped out by having a totally flat floor back there. Up front, you sit up high. Feels a lot like a small SUV, and lots of people like those. There's big windows here, and that helps make up for the rather thick roof pillars. Another help is the optional surround view camera added to the standard backup camera's view. Sure, this is no luxury car, but you wouldn't know it from the infotainment system where there are more shades of Tesla. On the center dashboard is a huge 10.2 inch screen. Get beyond some small buttons and it works really well with well-integrated Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and screens detailing energy consumption. Even the digital instrument panel is artfully done. But you do get that great feeling of instant electric torque from the moment you tap into the throttle. Putting the battery weight down low helps this tall box feel planted in corners. The Bolt feels solid and substantial and it's a lot more enjoyable to drive than a Nissan Leaf. Choosing L with the shifter increases regenerative braking, capturing rolling energy to recharge the battery. In this mode, you learn how to drive with barely tapping the brakes. It's all done through the gas pedal. This little toggle on the back of the steering wheel engages even more regenerative braking. So this is a very pleasant and very well thought out electric car, one that also happens to be relatively affordable. No question, GM has achieved a lot here building a long-range electric car at a fairly affordable price. Maybe some of those people intending to buy a Tesla Model 3 might want to think about canceling their reservations. Uh, this morning we had a, 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 a smaller group of uh, active people here uh, and uh, it was very enjoyable. The weather is nice, a little cool, and uh, we hope you enjoy this video and look forward to seeing you all uh, next month in November. And have a happy Halloween, everybody.